What's good YouTube? It's your boy Quarantino the God coming at you live and direct and today we have a very special topic nigga. So I have a story to tell and this story basically gives you a little insight on how thirsty these women are in real life. See you you can tell that these women are thirsty because they are thirsting for attention online like so. You see what I'm saying? But then they try and flip it on men. They try and flip it on the guys in their comment sections. Some of these guys have families. Some of these guys are married. Look, if you ever go through a woman's profile and you see the dudes commenting, commenting a lot of these guys have girlfriends a lot of these guys you know have 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 a, a family at home you know a wife kids you know people they need to be taken care of rather than liking and commenting on these chicks pictures but when you see the way that these guys operate you would be like man these guys are crazy like I don't know. I don't know what's gotten into these guys, man. They they're just like off the wall, like talking about they want to eat the booty and and lick this and lick that and and kiss this and kiss that. I don't even know this chick. Well, that's how these women act in real life. See, they will try and trip. They'll try and flip it on men and say, "Oh, men are thirsty because like you got guys in the DMs and shit like that." But the thing about it is these guys in real life, they're not really approaching these bad girls. They're not really approaching these bad chicks. You feel what I'm saying? They're not really they're not really stepping up to these girls and, and, and actually trying to bag them. You feel what I'm saying? They're not doing that. What they're what these guys are doing, they're in the comments section and they're liking pictures and, and helping them out to push the algorithms in their favor. But these guys, they're they're not talking to women who they find attractive on the re on a regular basis. They're not pressing up on women in real life who they find attractive on the regular basis. So let's just get that straight. But <clears throat> these women, when they are in scenarios, when they are around guys that they do find attractive, they get mad thirsty. And um, I, I've, I've been trying to wrap my head around why this is. And the fact of the matter is, aside from the online attention, aside from the validation that they're getting online, in real life, a lot of dudes just aren't really saying shit to them. And if they are, it's guys who they don't think are attractive, guys who they couldn't see themselves sleeping with, right? So this is the phenomenon that we have going on in 2020. They're getting all this love on social media while in real life, the guys aren't showing that much love. So they have to be more proactive in finding a guy they want. That's why you you might be on Twitter and you'll see these women talking about, well, should the guy should the guy be the one to press up first or or should, you know, should the woman wait on the guy? What's going on here? Like, you know, they're confused because the guys that they want, the guys who they might be giving the eye to. These guys don't feel like they have to press up on these chicks. And a lot of these guys don't feel like doing it. <laughs> That's just what it comes down to. A lot of these guys don't want to have to go through the bullshit that comes with it. You know, now for me, I, I say, look, man, it, it sometimes it'll be mad easy. So there's no there's there's no reason for you to not go and press up but but my thing is you know if she makes it difficult just fall back just don't just don't do shit yeah you know i mean don't try her no more if she makes it difficult just fall back fuck it yeah you know i mean move on to the next one you see what i'm saying um but <clears throat> i have an actual story some real live shit that happened to me and I'm about to get into it. So my freshman year of college, 
it was a great year. You know, me and my, one of my homeboys, we was we was chilling, and we would always find a move. We would always find where the hoes was at. You know, niggas be asking where the hoes at, and we would know. We would know. You see what I'm saying? So niggas would be often asking us where the hoes at, or asking me rather. But you know, I always involved the homies. So, <clears throat> anyways. We was with some of these ladies, these lovely ladies um, in, I guess it's like the Tri-Delta sorority. And for for one, let me get let me um, clear this up, too. A lot of dudes who go to um, PWIs, um, publicly white institutions uh, or predominantly white institutions, you see what I'm saying, versus these HBCUs. A lot of these dudes think that these sorority girls are untouchable and, and you know what I'm saying? You can't bag them or anything like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that's that's not true. That's not true. Um, a lot of these dudes think these sorority girls are just like um, specifically going to fuck with like the athletes or the sorority guys. You see what I'm saying? Or the fraternity guys. But that's just not true. You see what I'm saying? If you can if you give off that look, if you give off a vibe. You know, if it looks like that, you know, you working out and you working on your body and um, or if you just got mad talk game, you can definitely, definitely seal the deal on these sorority chicks, man. Like especially with the talk game, like you don't even have to be a guy who got who got your body on point. If you got a good talk game, you feel what I'm saying that they, they, they going for it. But um, I was actually in one of the dorms called O House. You see, <laughs> I was in one of the dorms, and uh, me and my homeboy, we was chilling with this chick, and I don't remember why, but we were, like, waiting in in the uh, lobby of one of the floors. You see, they would have the lobby, and then they would have um, the elevators, you know, that you would would basically, you'd be waiting in the lobby for the elevators on each floor. So we were were in one of those, and, uh, you know, we just chilling, talking chatting it up on some normal shit and shorty you see i could i could tell she was being restless because you know me and my home me and my homeboy you know we was good looking dudes or whatever um you know these these bitches is biting for that shit you know they they going up for us so we was chilling and and shorty just randomly brings it up she's oh we was talking about her ex boyfriend or whatever, and she was just saying how you know he he has some small meat or whatever, you know she was she was talking shit about him basically, but she was saying you know she she would still get him off and and this that and the third and and she would make sure that he was taken care of, and I was like oh yeah it sounds like you a head connoisseur you feel me, and she was like what and I was like yeah it sounds like you you you're good at giving throat. And, you know, she kind of gave me a smirk. And, and and then from there it was on, man, this shorty shorty was like, and this is like one of the supposedly the baddest bitches um, in the sorority or whatever. Supposedly one of the hardest. Uh, well, I guess they're not really that hard to bag. Um, but but it's supposed to be like a well-respected sorority or whatever. <clears throat> The, the tri delts or whatnot. Anyways, Shorty basically said, yo, if y'all if y'all can guess my bracelet, talking to me and my homeboy, if y'all can guess what type of bracelet I have on right now, then I'll give both of y'all top. <laughs> she said that shit it was off to the races, man. I was Googling, looking up information, all this shit, man. We all Google, we all trying to figure out what the fuck the bracelet is. Um, you know, we failed cuz cuz it was some high class shit. It was some <laughs> it was some shit I ain't never heard of, you know, and we're not really into no female accessories like that. So, I don't see how she would think we were supposed to know, but it was just the 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 fact that she threw that out there. That is what really got my attention. That's what really caught my eye. So, I already knew like, man, shit we could have we could have failed today but uh you know tomorrow's another day and tomorrow was indeed another day and and you know i followed up i followed up i don't know about the homie i followed up though and then you know i ended up uh actually ended up fucking with her friend too and they was best friends and shit like that i i actually ended up fucking with her friend too because um 
Her friend was kind of on me before that situation even happened. But it was like, you know, a kind of a, you know, choose one situation and, and they both chose and it was cool. And I, and I guess I chose both of them. But that that's just to that's just to say that. Look, man, you don't really ever know what the fuck could happen, especially if you got your mind right, your body right, your spirit right. Like if you in the right vibes, you 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 vibrating on the right frequencies, man. If you just put yourself in a position, if you put yourself out there, you know, you 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 take a risk. You take a risk and really huh. Whew. Yeah, it's late. It's late. It's 113 right now in the morning, so you know your boy is yawning. But look, if 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 you take a risk and just you know, put yourself in the situation. You see, that that situation only happened because you know, me and my homeboy, we we knew these girls was freshmen and they was coming in and um and they was coming in for a visit or whatnot. They was finna be freshmen, whatever. And they do the little sorority shit over the summer. And 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 we knew the rest was history after that. We already knew what was going on. See, we 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 kind of put ourselves in the position. We seek out, you know, what we're looking for. If you if you feeling like you lacking on some shit, if you feeling like you in a drought, in a slump, man. Put yourself out there, man. Get out there, dude. Like, press up. You you got to shoot your shot, man. You got to, and you got to say what's on your mind. See, if I wouldn't have never said, yeah, like it seemed like you give some good tops, she would have never brought it up. Maybe she would have, but I I just think that you should, when the opportunity is given, now don't just be coming off the cuff, you know, like on some sexual shit, whatever. But when the opportunity is given, I think you need to take that opportunity and try and escalate it to some sexual shit. Now, if you fall flat on your face, hey, that's on you. Don't blame it on Quarantino to God. <laughs> Look, man, you you probably wasn't reading the signs that she that she didn't find you that attractive or whatever. But if you if you don't fail and and she sees that she sees that um that you real about the shit. And that you look like you can, you can, you know what I'm saying? Bust her down real good. Then she gonna let it ride, bro. She gonna let it ride. Nine times out of ten, she gonna let it ride, bro. Cause, cause these women, you know, are looking for dudes who can fuck them the right way. That's just how it is. A lot of dudes ain't hitting it right. Certain women ain't getting good dick, man. Certain women ain't getting good dick to the point that they are begging for more dick from you. A lot of the times the shit ain't happening. A lot of the times dudes is missing a mark. You see? <clears throat> dudes ain't really hitting it right. Maybe because they not really interested in a chick or whatever. Whatever. This shit is going on, man. And I think a lot of dudes need to be aware of that. These chicks might be getting smashed, but it but but buddy might not be doing it right. Buddy might not be doing it right. And they're not fully sexually satisfied. And that's why they're moving on to the Chaz and Tyrones. Because Bill over here ain't doing it. He ain't cutting it. So you want to make sure you one of them niggas who's cutting it. And and how do you make sure that you cutting it when you in the gym? When you got your 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 blood pumping and pumping? When you got uh when you got oxygen pumping to your white blood cells, you know? All this shit is important. Your health, it's important, man. It factors into your sexual performance. So <clears throat> I just want you guys to understand that these women, in all actuality, are thirstier than dudes in real life, man. It may seem like dudes are are thirstier than women, but bro, no. The only thing is, 
the majority of women are thirsty for the minority of men, but they will go to further lengths than a man would to get a woman. You see what I'm saying? They'll go to further lengths. They'll they'll go across the country to fuck with their favorite celebrity. They'll 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 do backflips for a guy that they think, you know, is high status, good looking, you know, up to par to their standards. But in the top 15% of guys, they'll do backflips, man. So you got to put yourself in that situation. And how can you put yourself in that situation? By grinding, getting on your shit, getting in the gym, bro. Getting in the gym, man. That's how you do that. Working on your money, working on your finances, working on your job, your business, whatever it is. That's how you do that. You know, working on your status, going out, showing your face. Not being an introvert, man. Go out, spend some drinks. Tip some bartenders. Make sure that you known. Make sure that that which, when you pull up, you getting discounts. Put yourself out there, bro. Be a socialite. Be a social. Be a socialite, bro. Because at the end of the day, and I know it's some guys who are introverted and all this other shit, and they don't want to go through. All, look, man. All right. Then you just gonna be limited on the bitches that you can fuck with. So if you cool with that, then cool. But if you're not cool with that, if that just ain't cutting it for you, man, you want you want you want to know how to uh to dominate in your situation, wherever you at. Look, if y'all got bars or clubs or anything around there, don't be afraid to spend money. You don't gotta buy no drinks. Take that money that you would have used to buy drinks and give it to the bouncer. Take that money that you would have used to buy drinks and give it to the manager. Take that money that you would have used to buy drinks for a bitch and put it in the tip jar for the bartender that you think is hot. And I guarantee you she'll fuck with you on drinks. Don't be cheap, bro. You're going to have to put put up $20 or something. $30, $50 to the bouncer, maybe $100. But, but, But that gets you to cut the line. That allows you to cut the line. When, when the line is backed up, when everybody when it's a hot night and everybody's trying to get into the club and you know the bouncer, you gave him $100 last week and he know that shit is coming. So now you pull up, hey man, can me and my homeboys cut the line? And then you see two beautiful ladies in the line shit. Hey, them, they with us too. They with us too. That's how you do that, bro. That's how you do that. Hey, money talk, bro. Money talks. I don't give a fuck. You don't have to spend it on a bitch. You got to spend it on the people that matter. You got to spend it on the people who can make you look good. Because your appearance and your presentation is everything to these women, especially in this day in social media. They are looking at your social media. They are going to watch your story. If you press up on a bitch, you get her social media, she's going to watch your story to see what type of nigga you are. And that's just off rip. That's all. Fa- that's all facts. So make sure you're doing it right, man. You got to play the game just like they are. You got to play the game just like they are. Don't be upset. Don't be confused. Cause I'm I'm giving it to you right here. I'm giving it to you right here, man. So you already know what it is, man. It's your boy Quarantino the God. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Send your relationships, you send your relationship questions to my email with a screenshot of your cash app so I know you're paying your tithes. Y'all need to be on y'all motherfucking dean with the bullshit. Look, man, just know these women are more thirsty than the dudes. See, dudes can't dudes can't act crazy and act like they act in the comments. They can't act like they act in the comments in real life. Otherwise, you're gonna catch a case. But these women, they can, they can take those traits of those men who are thirsty to them. They can take those traits and apply that to themselves when they're pursuing a man. And it's all fair and game. You see what I'm saying? They can, they can, they can try and force a man to fuck him raw. 
and be upset that he didn't and feel butthurt that you didn't want to take the condom off. This shit has happened to me before. This shit happened to people around me before, man. Thirsty. They need that shit. Fiending for that dick. Fiending for some good dick now. But you already know what it is, man. It's your boy, Quarantino the God. I'm out. Thank you.